Over the past two years, this coalition government have been a tenacious advocate of big society, uh, a big society where we uh, expect um, giving to be incentivized. We see a new partnership with uh, the, the sector, a, a smaller state, a bigger society, whatever that means. But over the last uh, couple of months, we've seen a cap on the, the uh, tax relief offered on charitable donations. Uh, we've seen uh, various parts of government uh, redesignate uh, those who give money and philanthropists as self-interested tax dodgers. Uh, we've tainted all donors as, as something undesirable. And uh, we, we've ended up with this, this interesting situation where uh, major figures and leaders in, in this government have uh, made public statements about how some charities are much less worthy than other charities. Uh, some have some value and, and others are deemed not to have value. And that's even before we get to the concept of uh, dodgy charities. Is this just a big mistake? Is it, is it a, a lack of joined up government? Or are we seeing a full reversal of the big society policy? Is, is it simply dead? Gareth Thomas, how could the government have got it so wrong vis-a-vis -vis civil society in recent weeks and months? Um, I'm not really sure is the truth, but I mean, they have made an almighty mess of it. Um, a number of former Treasury ministers on the, um, on the Labour side have said that, you know, there's a process to, um, to budgets whereby, you know, in the, in the last few days in the run-up to a budget, uh, you know, the Chancellor and uh, ministers realise that they actually need to find a new ways of, uh, additional ways of raising some revenue um, to make the sums add up. And uh, they asked the civil servants to, uh, to go away and find um, uh, these sources. And there are, the civil service in the Treasury tends to have a series of stock um, uh, solutions, one of which has, been, uh, always, has always been to reduce the, um, uh, the charity tax relief um, cap. Uh, this time it got through. And uh, what seems extraordinary is that nobody did any thinking in government about the impact it would, um, it would, it would have. Um, I think government um, took a, a major strategic decision in terms of the decision to cut the top rate of tax, and it was then about how do you um, make the sums add up. I mean, I think they made the wrong strategic um, choice, and I think that charities um, are suffering as a result. What does it say for you about the role of the Office for Civil Society within the government structure? Um, well, I think there's a separate question about the role of the Office um, for Civil Society. What it says to me, as I, I said in my presentation, is that um, you know, the ministers who are supposed to represent the interests of um, uh, charities in government are not being listened to. That's what it says to me most uh, clearly. What's the NCVO perspective on, on the government's management of the whole tax cap issue, Stuart? Oh, disastrous. I mean, you know, no doubt in my mind about this. They, I think there were two forces at work when this decision was made. Um, and I don't think anybody was consulted in terms of, well, ministers who were relevant. I mean, I think the arts minister, uh, uh, Jeremy Hunt probably heard about it about a half hour before and got rather worried because he'd been extolling the virtues of large donations for the, the, f f the previous year. Uh, so he was sort of wrong-sighted, I think. Um, I think there were two driving forces here. Uh, I think one was a sort of fairness argument, which was advanced, I suspect, by uh, liberals who were involved in this discussion, which was, if you're going to knock the top rate down to 45%, you've got to do something about uh, tax breaks and tax allowances. Um, and you've got to, there's a, there was a sort of fairness strand to this. And the other was the HMRC who saw an opportunity to cap what they thought was a, a level of tax avoidance. Now, you know, years ago, not many people believe this anymore, I was a social worker. And uh, when I was a social worker, it was only two years. And uh, <laughs> it was a very profitable two years. Uh, but the, uh, I used to think everybody had problems when I was a social worker. Uh, the whole world, you know, everybody except me. And, uh, uh, and if you work for the HMRC, you think everybody's on the fiddle. Uh, it's a sort of natural mindset that you have. Uh, and that you try to close tax... Your job is to try and close tax breaks, tax dodges tax allowances uh, to make it all simpler and to, 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 to reduce tax avoidance. And so I think there was a confluence of two things that went on uh, and nobody else really knew. And nobody thought through the implications of the way this would play in terms of the avowed big society strategy, which was to encourage 
high net worth individuals particularly to give more. Uh, and so I think that there wasn't any sense of how inconsistent this was with the avowed policy of encouraging <coughs> high net worth individuals. And the sector, I mean, I tell you, I've never seen such an alliance in all my life. I said, you know, I've got some very strange phone calls over the last three or four weeks. So has John, I suspect, from, you know, people that you wouldn't believe. People have, people have joined up to the Give It Back George campaign in ways that, you know, anything from cats to cathedrals. So you've got quite an alliance operating. You want to know where community leadership is. They're all on the website, signed up to the Give It Back George campaign. I think the government will have to shift its position on this. OK. Now, uh, Lord Wallace speaks for the government on cabinet office issues in the Lords. What's your perspective um, and take on this? Well, let me start by saying there is a tax avoidance problem. And out there, I'm a politician, um, there's a, a, a great deal of public anger about tax avoidance amongst the very rich. And that is part of what we have to respond to. The argument being made was that the combination of reliefs, other forms of loss relief, were enabling some of the very rich, and we're talking about a relatively small number, to avoid tax altogether. I recall seeing a, an article by Victor Blank in The Times uh, nearly a year ago now, which said that, that what the government should be doing is actually to lower tax even further for the rich on charitable donations, to move in, indeed towards the American model. And I, I would be interested to, to know if John Lowe and others think we really should be moving towards the American model. I don't think that at that is uh, we want to, any of us want to go as far as that. I did sit in to the conversation which uh, David Gork and Nick Hurd together were having with a number of people from this sector uh, last week. We are actively consulting with the sector uh, on uh, how best to meet all of these different pressures. This is was a decision taken in the budget for um, uh, a change which was which was due is due to come in for 2013, so there is plenty of time yet for consultation. We have heard the extremely vigorous representations uh, from the sector, and we hope that the consultations will continue and we will be able to reach agreement. Lord Hodgson, welcome. Uh, thank you very Hi. much for joining the panel. I won't throw you in, in the deep end on this question, but you can guess what it is by what you've heard Lord Wallace saying I could, there. I couldn't have guessed a word. Um, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> Lord Wallace, I mean, given, given the appalling way in which it's been handled and the, the sham charities defence and the fraudulent defence and so on and the undermining of everything that the, the coalition appears to have been doing to try and encourage the big society in the last two years, mm. should Nick Hurd have resigned over this issue? No, and I, I mean, let's be honest, I mean, not every single charity is as public-spirited and determined to spend every single penny on public benefit as every other one and some family trusts which are well uh, I, I defer to the man to my right who is indeed in the middle of a review of the Charities Act on which he will be reporting to the government in July and that will give us rather better evidence of this I, I am I have some form in dealing with the Channel Islands uh, over the years of looking at various forms of tax avoidance, there is a very serious problem. And it is quite right that the coalition government should be looking at um, tax avoidance by the rich. Now, we've, th the sector feels that we have enormously overplayed this one. We are therefore open to consultation. You are giving us a very vigorous uh, set of answers to this. We will consider and, and uh, move further on it. But, uh, I think if the government is to be convicted um, uh, on this thing, that it is perhaps that we took a little bit too seriously the Warren Buffett rule that you know, everyone should pay at least as much in tax as the people they employ. But with respect, William, I mean, uh, the, no government minister has been able to come up with a, an example of a dodgy charity that was benefiting from this tax, tax relief cap. OK, I want to take one or two uh, views from the floor. There's a question... Hang on a sec, please. One from uh, the front here. Anyone else want to chip in on this subject? Um, Deborah Tyler, let's take those two questions. Would you stand up and let us know who you are and where you're from? Daniela Baroness Suarez, Chief Executive of the Impetus Trust. 
I think the, the way, with all impetus trust, uh, with all due respect, I think the argument is, is wrong in the way that it's been put. Because cap, tax cap is not the way to address fraud or, or tax avoidance. Because tax fraud is intolerable. It should be zero tolerance for fraud. What you're doing with a tax cap is say, we tolerate up to 25% of fraud. <laughs> this is absolutely wrong. The reality here is there is a much better argument and a much serious argument, which is there is a philosophical decision by the government doing that, which is saying that no, uh, that every no amount of relief should go to charities or to individuals, but actually should part of it should be going always to the government. That is the philosophy, and that's not what has been addressed in a constructive way, because that would be a much more engaging debate rather than the fraud, which I think muddies the water a lot. Thank you. Uh, Deborah Tyler. Uh, Deborah Tyler, it's just a comment, really. I think it's really dangerous to conflate the two issues. There's a massive difference between tax avoidance by the wealthy and the operations of charities, and that to put the two together and create them as the same conversation, the same cause or the same answer isn't the right route forward and is probably part of what the problem is. 